Sam um, giving wins and stuff. So if anyone's got any massive wins from the month of March, I would love to see in the group. And I'm actually going to talk a little bit about imposter syndrome and comparing yourself to other people as well. So it might be a good thing for some of you guys who have done well to put something in there. And then I would love to see if any of you guys get triggered because if you're like me, there are certain times in life where you feel like you're inferior, that you're not where you wanna be and you're behind the pace that you have set yourself, that arbitrary pace, that number, that goal, that target, and it can become very stressful and overwhelming. If you guys know what I mean by this, just drop me a one in the chat down below where you feel like a lot of the time other people are where you want to be and you're not where you wanna be right now. You've been putting in the work, you've been hustling and you do not know what is going wrong. Someone drop a one in the chat if this is you right now. I want to see what's going on. So, a load of you guys are dropping ones, and this is perfect because today on this Mindset Monday, I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about identity, confidence, and overwhelm. So, for everyone who is new to the Online Startup Academy right now, well, firstly, congratulations on taking the bold and courageous move to jump on board and do something that most people are not willing to do. Most people are willing to settle for mediocrity because the fear and the risk is too great for them to take action. And they live a life of inaction, one which they never choose to actually become more and to serve and to give back to people at a higher level. Because the reality is we have finite time on this planet. We can only do so much. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we are moving the human species forward in some capacity. And for you guys who have chosen health and fitness to be your calling right now, that is what you guys want to do. And I am absolutely honored to have you as part of this program so we can help you grow your vision, grow your brand, and grow your impact as well. So let's get into Mindset Monday, identity, confidence, and overwhelm. And to be honest, I have struggled massively over the last 30 days with these three things. So don't feel like, you know, James or George or Sam never struggled with this stuff. Like every single person you look up to struggles with this from like the person you follow on social media like myself over to presidents of the United States or to top entrepreneurs like Elon Musk or to Steve Jobs when he's on the planet, they all struggle with this stuff. No one is immune from it. So don't ever feel like you're alone and never listen to someone who says they've got this stuff all figured out. But the best we can do is we can learn together, we can be vulnerable, we can be honest with each other and we can move forward. So identity, confidence and overwhelm, let's get into it. So the reality is we've just wrapped up the month of April. We've just done our April team review for our, for our whole company. Had about 20 people on the Zoom call, it was awesome. And to be honest, we bounced back from a really turbulent March. Now March for us wasn't a good month and it wasn't because of coronavirus being the downturn, it's because of decisions that we'd made earlier in the year from poor thinking. And this is really important. The level of your thinking is gonna dictate your world around you. And loads of people always ask, George and I, they're like, how are you able to bounce back so quickly? So let's take the last month as an example. We just doubled the monthly revenue from the month prior in a single month. And people probably wanna know the secret. They're like, what ads are you running right now? What's your targeting? What are you doing on sales calls that you're doing differently? And the secret is none of those things. It's nothing tactical or strategic. It's all down to thinking. And if you can outthink your competition, and more importantly, if you can think with stability and consistency, you're gonna be so far ahead of everybody else. And more importantly, again, you're gonna be in a position where you feel calm and at peace with yourself. Because at the end of the day, you can have the biggest, most thriving, prosperous business out there that looks amazing and ticks all the, the boxes for being the greatest and the best and the highest revenue and all that kind of stuff. But if you are not feeling happy and fulfilled, it's absolutely pointless. And that's something that I have come to realize over the last six to 12 months is there is no pleasure in just chasing the number and trying to be bigger and bigger and bigger. To a certain point there is, don't get me wrong, for you guys who are coming to the OSA right now who are new and you're like, I need to make money to support my family, I need to make money to live a better life, there is value in that, 100%. Making more money is great. I'm never not gonna say that's true, but there is a point where you need to think beyond that. And a lot of the time, we can get caught up in this very narrow thinking, this finite thinking, where we lose track of why we are doing what we are doing. If you guys can relate to me right now, again, drop me a one in the chat, just let me know you're with me on this, and you found yourself trapped in forgetting why you are doing what you are doing, you forget your just cause. And this is so important because I've been reading more and more Simon Sinek late, lately, he's really just gone deep into my consciousness, and his book, The Infinite Game, which I've talked about many, many times, you guys should definitely grab a copy of it, speaks about this idea that when you start out business initially, you have a just cause, you have a reason, you have a vision to grow your company. So for us, 
Our mission, our vision is to make the remote revolution as accessible as the internet itself, which means we want to give anyone who has access to the internet the opportunity to live life on their terms, to build a business that allows them to thrive financially, allows them to help other people, allows them to have freedom of their time and their mobility. These are things that I hold so dearly because I've come from the corporate background where I've had that thing taken away from me because of my choices. But over time, what happens is we start to forget why we're doing what we're doing and we immediately just compare ourselves to the competition. So for you guys in this group right now, who are probably coming into this and you're seeing some clients saying, hey, I've just done 30K this month, or hey, I've just done 26K this month, or hey, I've just closed three sales this week, it can feel really debilitating. And why is that? It's because we're telling ourselves we should be where that other person is, but we don't know what that other person's been through. And more importantly, we don't know what race they're running. They're running a different race to a different cause. And it's so important that we look at someone and say, okay, what objectively are they doing good right now? Once I then understand that it's possible, close that book, close that chapter, and go back to writing your own book, the one that is important to you. So that's the first thing that allowed George and I to really excel this month was we got back to understanding our cause, the remote revolution, the thing we're passionate about, that infinitely growing mission of ours. And the second thing was adjusting our targets. Now, a lot of the time you guys will start the month out and you'll say, okay, I want to shoot for 10K, 15K, 20K, whatever your monthly target is. And when you start missing that target, what do you do? You beat yourself up. You tell yourself you should be doing more. You should be working harder. Now, the majority of you people in, in this program right now work really fucking hard. Well, the ones I know, the, the ones I know of you do anyway, all right? If you're new to this, then it might be slightly different. You might be slacking and you need to have that honest conversation. But the majority of you guys, you're in a very fast paced, intense environment. And a lot of time you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, the person next to you. And if you're missing out on the goal, the arbitrary goal that you've plucked out the air because you think that 10K a month sounds cool and you start missing that, then what do you do? You work harder, you beat yourself up, you berate yourself because your ego won't let go. It will not let go and say, I should be where that person is. I should be at 10K already, but it's not healthy. It's not healthy. What is the point in that? Again, you're running a different race to that person. You have your own cause, your own mission. It's not just about an arbitrary figure at the end of the day. So what George and I did is we adjusted our targets for the month of April. We pulled everything back. We took account of our ego and said, hey, we're going to have to clip a few things here to stabilize, to grow deeper underground so the tree can grow taller in future months. And that's exactly what we did. And it's how we doubled the business in the month of April. So two things, know your why, also known as your just cause, and then adjust your targets. So make sure that you are reflecting what's going on in the environment around you and where your energy is as well and all those other factors that come together to allow you to be an entrepreneur. All right, so that's the first two things. Now, now I've given you that little intro and I want to tell you that I'm not immune to any of these issues that I'm about to talk about myself, identity, confidence and overwhelm. I'm not immune to any of this. But a lot of this gets brought up when I talk to certain people and I coach certain people. Now, the majority of my coaching right now is given towards our team and it's given towards our evolution clients. So I'm going to pull two examples out from the last seven days of where I was coaching a team member and I was coaching an evolution client about some of these challenges. All right. And then hopefully you guys can see some patterns in yourself that relate to these and then what you can do to move forward. All right. Is that all making sense? Give me a hell yeah in the chat down below if that will make sense. And we're going to dive into this thing. So the coaching, coaching session I have with a sales team member. I recently was talking to one of our sales teams, a young guy, very ambitious, is an incredibly hard worker, has great potential, but right now is berating himself because he's not where he wants to be. He's comparing himself to what other people are doing, what he knows is possible, and he's behind the pace because he hasn't done enough reps right now, right? And what we start to do when we haven't done enough reps is we start to question ourselves, is what we're doing the right thing? So I used this analogy of him, I said, look, To make a fine whiskey, because I'm a whiskey drinker, to make a fine whiskey, you can have the best environment in the world, but if you only leave the whiskey in the barrel for a couple of months, it doesn't matter how good the environment is, it doesn't matter how good the ingredients are, it doesn't matter how good the water is, you're not going to get a quality whiskey at the end of the day because it's not had time to mature and do the reps inside the barrel to move forward. So a lot of the time what we do as human beings is we start to cut ourselves short when we're actually in the perfect place. We're in the perfect environment right now for what we need, but because we're not getting the immediate feedback, the immediate gratification, we start to question everything and we start to change a hundred things. We start to try and set all these ridiculous goals with a hundred different targets that we have to try and achieve. So in the case of this sales team member, 
He had a hundred things, literally a hundred things that he was telling himself every single day he needed to do. He needed to study, he needed to get up at this time, go to sleep at this time, he needed to train at this time, do this many reps, he needed to eat these certain foods at these certain times. It was like he was trying to be a professional in 16 to 20 different like full-time occupations. And what happened for him is he was overwhelming himself with this checklist. He literally had a checklist at the end of each day that he would go through and mark yes or no on if he's achieved those things, but it was physically unachievable. It was impossible. There was not enough hours in the day to hit all the things that he wanted to hit. So naturally, what happens is you start to feel like a failure because you are breaking the promises that you keep with yourself. And as soon as you break a promise that you keep to yourself, when you promise yourself that I'm going to go and achieve X, Y, and Z because that's going to allow me to get to my goals, which often are not your true goals, it's just an arbitrary number that you've pulled out of the air because you want to do it and compete with other people. Once that happens, then what starts to, we start to find out next is we lose our confidence. Because once you fail to hit those micro commitments of saying, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z at this time, on this day, when you do not do that repeatedly, what happens to your confidence? In the chat down below, when you keep breaking your commitments, what happens to your confidence? Does it go up? Does it go down? Does it plateau? Does it stay the same? What happens to it? It goes down. The reason it goes down is because you have just broken integrity with yourself. So how are you gonna have integrity with something outside of yourself, like a goal or to get someone onto your program? It becomes impossible. So if you are repeatedly missing targets, you need to look at them and ask yourself, is this actually what I want to achieve right now? Have things changed? Second question, is this even possible for me to achieve all of these targets I'm setting myself at this moment in my life? A lot of the time it's not. We set too much and we cannot do it. We overfill the cup and we wonder why we're spilling water everywhere. We can't fit more and more in the same cup. We have limited bandwidth. So you need to ask yourself, do I need to adjust? Do I need to course correct? And there is nothing wrong with that. There is no shame in saying I need to back off a little bit. I need to recover a little bit. I need to pull down my ego a little bit, which is always a good thing to do, to get myself back on my true course, back on the path that I know I need to walk on because it's my path, no one else's. Alrighty? So that's the first coaching session. Hopefully that made sense. That all good for you guys. Can you guys relate to that? And what I'm saying here is pull back, get your ego in check. It's the best and healthiest thing for you to do. Take stock, consolidate, grow healthy roots beneath the ground and the tree will be able to grow taller and it will be able to stand the gale force winds that you're going to put yourself into as you try and grow your company and your vision and everything else. The second coaching session, which I've not actually had as a coaching session yet, it was just from one of our clients in the evolution group amazing client, I'm not going to drop her name here, and she's been really struggling to get her calls to show up. She booked 12 calls last week and had 10 no-shows or 10 cancellations, a mix between no-shows and cancellations. Now, I looked at what she was doing and her process seemed solid. She was doing all the right things she should have been doing right now, but she was still berating herself. Because what happens as human beings is we're always looking for that edge and we're wondering what we're doing wrong, and that's great. But a lot of times, if you are following a process and you follow it to the letter, you cannot start beating yourself up when external factors interfere. And I said to her, look, you've done all the right things. You've followed the right process to achieve your goals and to get the person on the phone and to show up and to be there. But they've made a decision not to show. And you can't do that. You've done your best. You've done your parts. You've ticked the boxes that you have in your process. It's much like a pilot. When he takes off, he has a checklist. He checks all the boxes. If he checks all the boxes and all the dials read correct and he's taken the plane off, then something happens while he's in flight it's not his fault. He has done the due diligence. He has done the work. And then obviously he has to course correct and react to that problem. And just like we have to do when we've followed the process and we've done the work and something doesn't work out, we get to course correct, but we do not berate ourselves. Again, another example is like if you go on holiday and you've been planning this holiday for six months, you've planned out all the places you want to go, you've looked at the weather forecast a couple of days before you get on the plane to take off, and it's beautiful sunshine, everything's going to be great, you're going to go scuba diving, you're going to go hiking, you're going to do all these amazing things, and then you get there and then you're hit by this tropical storm that wasn't expected or forecasted, and suddenly you can't do all the things that you planned. Now what happens? You don't get mad. You don't go crazy and start beating yourself up saying, I should have known to, to plan for different trips. I should have packed different attire, different clothing to deal with these climates. It's like you looked at the forecast, you followed the process because of the forecast, and you showed up to the, to the event, to the environment, ready for that forecast. Then things outside of your control changed. And that's so important. We can't change the weather. We can't change if someone's going to show to a call. We can just follow the process. 
So always remember that guys, are you ticking the right boxes? Am I putting in the work? If I am, the best thing to do is pat yourself on the back, take a step back, detach your identity from the outcome and say, have I done the right things to move the mission forward? Not towards the goal of 10K a month, but have I done the right thing to move the mission forward? Did I keep my commitments to myself? Did I maintain my promises to the mission, to the vision and to the just cause? All right. So that's the second example. Again, guys, if that making sense, give me a hell yeah in the chat. I'm gonna have some water, and then we're gonna move on to talk about identity and some other cool stuff as we get through this. All right, cool. Got one hell yeah, two hell yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Sweet. So the reason I bring all of this up is because everything at the end of the day comes down to your identity. When you build your identity, your identity will build your life. When you build your identity, your identity will build your life. If you focus on your identity, who it is that you want to be, who you want to become, when you focus all your attention on that, everything else will start to fall into place. It is just a reality. And it's why when you guys come onto the Online Startup Academy, we say, go and fill out your true self doctrine. Go and read the book, Psycho Cybernetics. I'm telling you to do these things, not because it's like a fancy strategy or new tactic that's gonna generate you new leads overnight, it's going to give you the healthy foundations to operate for decades in your business and to outlast everybody else. We can have people who come in, they get quick wins, but they disappear next week. There's no fame, there's no success, there's no congratulation in that. That's not something you can be proud of. You've just come and been a one-hit wonder. Lay the healthy foundations, which means lay your identity. So if you build your identity and focus on who it is you want to be, everything else will start to fall into place. So if you guys are falling off doing your true self doctrine every morning, you need to get back on that. If you guys are not reading and actively having inputs that are strengthening your identity, you need to get back on that. Do not become so transfixed on just output, output, output that you forget to feed the input because if that identity starts to fray and you start to go off course and you start chasing things that you shouldn't be chasing, then it's very hard to pull yourself back on. You have to have that courageous conversation with yourself that, hey, I've fallen away here. I need to go back to the basics of building my identity and everything will fall into place. So what does this really mean, the identity piece? Because some people always wonder what it is. So let let me break it down like this. There's something called DILT's neurological levels and it's like a, it's a pyramid if you guys have seen it, similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where the pyramid stacks over time. And on the bottom level of the pyramid, the thing that influences us the most from day one is our environment. So what's the right place for me to be is the question you need to ask yourself. Now you guys are in a fantastic environment inside the OSA. Obviously right now people are trapped at home, you're trapped at home, and it's an unfortunate place to be. So you need to make sure that you are having the right inputs from other environments external to your physical one that are putting you in a place of abundance and growth. So make sure you are surrounding yourself with that environment. And when you surround yourself with that environment as a base, you can then work on the behaviors that you want to express on top of that environment. That's the second level, behaviors. So what should I do? What are the things I should be doing each day? What are my commitments to myself each day that are gonna allow me to make the most out of this environment? Now remember, your environments are gonna influence your behavior. So get a strong environment and remove those things that are not healthy for you and it's gonna become easier to get better behaviors. So I say this to our team all the time, like if you're going to bed with your phone next to you, get that thing out. That's part of your environment which then is dictating your behaviors. Right? Your environment largely dictates your performance. So if I'm going to bed and I have my phone next to me and I'm scrolling through it and I wake up first thing and I scroll through it again, then I'm being dictated to by the outside world. I'm not making conscious decisions from me. And that's not a nice, nice or healthy place to be. So take your phone, stick it on the other side of the room, put it on airplane mode and never take your phone into your bed ever, 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 ever. If anyone's read Atomic Habits, you'll know why this is. You wanna have certain rooms, certain chairs, certain locations for certain activities and don't blend them together. Your bed is for sleeping. So make sure it becomes a little safe haven for you and you remove that thing that a lot of people struggle with is their phone. The next layer up on the pyramid is level number three and that's skills and knowledge. So once you've got the environment right, once you've got your behaviors right, you can then add skills and knowledge to that. This is why so many people who come through the OSA get vastly different results. Someone can come in and immediately start making sales from day one, day three, day five, and other people might take to day six, day seven, or maybe even week six or week seven to start getting results. Why? Well, it's not down to skills and knowledge like people think it is. It's predominantly down to the things either side of that, your environment and your behaviors. If your environment's screwed up and your behaviors are screwed up, I can give you the exact same course, the exact same coaching, but you're gonna elicit different results. So always remember that skills and knowledge are important. What do I need to know to move forward? But you should always remember I need my environment and behaviors to be on point first. 
Then we've got the fourth level. The fourth level is your values and your beliefs. So what is important to you? Your beliefs are something that can change. Your values are more fixed. So your beliefs are gonna be something that you wanna focus on and actively remove limiting beliefs right now and replace them with healthy beliefs. So if you currently believe that the market is, no one is buying right now, that everyone is running around in panic, then you need to go and replace that belief with one of abundance. And notice that people like Jeff Bezos has just added 24 billion to his fortune in the last two weeks. People are buying things. They're sitting at home buying things. They're buying online coaching. We've got clients inside the group right now who are doing 30K months, 26K months. People are buying online coaching right now. So you need to remove that belief. If you start to believe that, then of course, you're gonna get that in your material world. And then your values are the things that are typically fixed. Like I have certain values around freedom, integrity, speaking the truth at all times. Like one of my biggest things is I will seek the truth no matter how painful it will be because eventually if you lie to yourself and you lie to other people and you don't confront people with those difficult conversations, it's gonna become far more painful in the future for everyone. And you have a duty to be honest to yourself and to the people around you to serve them. And that's why I'm so big on seeking the truth. And that's one of my values, right? So you must know what your values are. Then from your values, we finally get to your identity. Your identity is who I am. It is the thing that dictates everything in your life. Get your identity solid by focusing on those five layers up to the point about your identity and you will make better decisions. You will make decisions unconsciously. Once your identity is so rock solid and that is who you are, it's how you operate, things just start to happen. You make better decisions. You're not thinking about the decisions, you're just doing it because you've done the reps, you have implanted that person into your psychology and then your subconscious just takes control. And that's the beautiful thing. That's what identity is all about. And then finally, I said to you guys, there's a sixth layer to this. The sixth hidden layer. And this is your purpose. This is your spiritual purpose, if you will. Like, who else needs me in the world right now? It's because the previous five levels are all about you. The sixth level of this pyramid of Dilt's neurological levels is about how you can serve other people. And if your purpose is bigger than yourself, like serving the right revolution, a thing that I'm never gonna be able to achieve in my lifetime. You know, I wanna say that our mission is to make the remote revolution as accessible as the internet itself. There's always gonna be more internet access than there are people who are living the life that they dream from that internet. There always is. So that is a bigger mission than I can ever achieve. But that is a purpose that drives me forward and it allows me to keep moving and not get fixated on all these other things about how do I beat this competitor or how do I hit this certain financial goal this month. So once you have that thing and you should think about that thing, you're gonna feel much more at peace, much more at ease and know what you're doing is right for you. Huge thing. All right, so we've gone through a little, little couple of things here. We've gone through what I wanted to talk about with knowing your why, your just cause. We talked about adjusting your targets and making sure that we're not breaking our promises with ourselves. We then talked about um, the conversation with one of the evolution clients and understanding if I'm following a process and I'm ticking the boxes of the process, do not berate myself when things external to that start to kick off because they will, that is not in my control. I have no right to even think about that. And then we just talked a little bit about identity and the levels of our identity. So that is all I have for you guys today. I don't wanna add anything else on top of that. I hope that has been a useful insight into how I've been thinking lately and for you to understand that you're not alone, right? George, myself, Sam, our whole team are here to support you. And we've been through all the stuff that you guys are going through right now. If you feel like you've got a bit of an identity crisis and you're fighting against a former identity and you have people who are pulling you down to a lower level, then speak to us. We're here to help you. If you feel like your confidence is taking a hit right now, if you feel like you're overwhelmed and you've got so much to focus on, you don't know what you should be doing, you haven't got clarity, reach out, let us serve you. Do not sit in silence and suffer. Sam, that is all I have for these guys today. I don't know if you've got anything to wrap up with. Otherwise, we'll uh, pull the plug on this. Let the guys get back to work. Go and crush. Feel free to listen back to this recording as much as you want. If it's something that was useful, please let us know what else you want for next month's Mindset Monday, and I will get that in the training. But for now, I'm all done. Sam, you all good? Yo, what's, what's going, going down? It's James Moody again. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Mindset Monday, where we went through a ton of stuff on how to sculpt your identity overcome confusion and overwhelm and have dead certain confidence in your daily actions. So if you wanna get more of this stuff, you wanna find out more about how we can help you for free, feel free to shoot me a message over on Instagram at James Moody Official. Just head over there, drop me a DM saying you checked out the show, you loved it, you want some more information, and I'll make sure that my team get back to you and hook you up with whatever you need, whether that's mindset training like we've just been through, sales training, lead gen training, fulfillment training, whatever you need right now to get your business moving forward during these uncertain times, I'm here to help you. So head across to Instagram 
at James Moody Official and we will get back to you straight away. Peace out and see you next week.